Another one of his disciples, Andrew, who was Simon Peter's brother, said, There is a boy here who has five loaves of barley bread and two fish. But they will certainly not be enough for all these people. Make the people sit down. There was a lot of grass there, so all the people sat down. There were about 5,000 men. Jesus took the bread, gave thanks to God. distributed to the people who were sitting there. When they were all full, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces left over. Let us not waste a bit. So they gathered them all and filled twelve baskets with the pieces left over from the five barley loaves which the people had eaten. Seeing this miracle that Jesus had performed, the people there said, Surely this is the prophet who was to come into the world. Jesus knew that they were about to come and seize him in order to make him king by force, so he went off again to the hills by himself. When evening came, Jesus' disciples went down to the lake, got into a boat, and went back across the lake towards Capernaum. Night came on, and Jesus still had not come to them. By then a strong wind was blowing and stirring up the water. Disciples had rowed about three or four miles when they saw Jesus walking on the water. Don't be afraid. It is I. reached land at the place they were heading for. Next day, the crowd which had stayed on the other side of the lake realized that there had only been one boat there. They knew that Jesus had not gone in it with his disciples, but that they had left without him. Other boats, which were from Tiberias, 
came to shore near the place where the crowd had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. When the crowd saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they got into those boats and went to Capernaum, looking for him. When the people found Jesus on the other side of the lake, they said to him, Teacher, when did you get here? I am telling you the truth. You were looking for me because you ate the bread and had all you wanted. Not because you understood my miracles. Do not work for food that spoils. Instead, work for the food that lasts for eternal life. This is the food which the Son of Man will give you because God the Father has put his mark of approval on him. What can we do in order to do what God wants us to do? What, can we do? what God wants you to do is to believe in the one he sent. What miracle will you perform so that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? What will you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert, just as scripture says. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. I am telling you the truth. What Moses gave you is not the bread from heaven. It is my Father who gives you the real bread from heaven. For the bread that God gives is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Give us this bread. I am the bread of life. Those who come to me will never be hungry. Those who believe in me will never be thirsty. Now I told you that you have seen me, but will not believe. Everyone who my father gives me will come to me. I will never turn away anyone who comes to me. Because I have come down from heaven to do not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And it is the will of him who sent me that I should not lose any of all those he has given me, but that I should raise them all to life on the last day. For what my father wants is that all who see the Son and believe in him should have eternal life. And I will raise them to life on the last day. The people started grumbling about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. This man is Jesus! son of Joseph, isn't he? We know his father and mother. How then does he now say he came down from heaven? among yourselves! People cannot come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them to me. And I will raise them to life on the last day. The prophets wrote, everyone will be taught by God Anyone who hears the Father and learns from him, comes to me. <laughs> this does not mean that anyone has seen the Father. He who is from God is the only one who has seen the Father. I am telling you the truth. He who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the desert, but they died. But the bread that comes down from heaven is of such a kind that whoever eats it will not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If you eat this bread, you will live forever. The bread that I will give you is my flesh, which I give so that the world may live. This started an angry argument among them. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? 
I am telling you the truth. If you do not eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will not have life in yourselves. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life. And I will raise them to life on the last day. For my flesh is the real food, my blood is the real drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood live in me. And I live in them. The living Father sent me. And because of him I live also. In the same way, whoever eats me will live because of me. This, then, is the bread that came down from heaven. It is not like the bread that your ancestors ate but then later died. Those who eat this bread will live forever. Jesus said this as he taught in the synagogue in Capernaum. Many of his followers heard this and said, this teaching is too hard. Who can listen to it? Without being told, Jesus knew that they were grumbling about this. Does this make you want to give up? Suppose then, that you should see the Son of Man go back up to the place where he was before. What gives life is God's spirit. Human power is of no use at all. The words I have spoken to you bring God's life-giving spirit. Yet some of you do not believe Jesus knew from the very beginning who were the ones that would not believe and which one would betray him. This is the very reason I told you that no people can come to me unless the Father makes it possible for them to do so. Because of this, many of Jesus' followers turned back and would not go with him anymore. And you? Would you also like to leave? Lord, to whom would we go? You have the words that give eternal life. And now we believe and know that you are the Holy One who has come from God. I chose the twelve of you, didn't I? One of you is a devil. He was talking about Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. For Judas, even though he was one of the twelve disciples, was going to betray him. After this, Jesus traveled in Galilee. He did not want to travel in Judea because the Jewish authorities there were wanting to kill him. The time for the festival of shelters was near, so Jesus' brothers said to him, Leave this place and go to Judea so that your followers will see the things that you're doing. People don't hide what they're doing if they want to be well known. Since you are doing these things, let the whole world know about you. Not even his brothers believed in him. The right time for me has not yet come. Any time is right for you. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I keep telling it that its ways are bad. You go on to the festival. I am not going to this festival. Because the right time has not come for me. He said this and then stayed on in Galilee. After his brothers had gone to the festival, Jesus also went. However, he did not go openly, but secretly. The Jewish authorities were looking for him at the festival. Where is he? they asked. There was much whispering about him in the crowd. He is a good man, some people said. No, others said. He fools the people. But no one talked about him openly because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities. The festival was nearly half over when Jesus went to the temple and began teaching. <laughs> 